So what is coastal engineering about? Well, the main problem we are talking about is coastal erosion. Uh, I mean, that, that is a very fundamental uh, uh, problem and we see it a lot. Uh, here's an example from uh, Hoi An in, uh, in Vietnam in the center coast. Um, here another example from uh, from the coast of Ghana near the Volta Delta. Uh, this road is uh, was was very very much uh, threatened in the low lying uh, uh, land uh, behind it as well. Here's what happens if you block the longshore sediment transport and uh, uh, and don't replenish the beach. This used to be a very wealthy uh, recreational area. You see this blue thing here is a former swimming pool, and that uh, is uh, clearly uh, uh, not in a very good uh, state now. We're not just concerned with sandy coasts, but we also look more and more into, uh, into muddy coasts and mangrove coasts. Well, here's what happens if you uh, take away the mangrove belt and uh, develop uh, uh, fish uh, ponds uh, everywhere. Uh, this is the coast of Samarang in 2002, uh, this is in 2008, and this is in 2013. So you see these, uh, if you take away the, the, the natural defenses that, that keep the, the sediment uh, in place, and protects against waves, then, then you can have ero erosion of kilometers. Um, you see, on the other hand, that in this area there's already a new mangrove belt growing naturally. And of course, efforts are underway now to see if this area can be restored. Now, what causes these kind of problems? One of the major things that happens is that sand and gravel used for construction uh, is taken uh, away from the beaches uh, at an astonishing uh, rate. Uh, and the amount is similar to the total sediment discharge of all rivers worldwide. And at the same time, the total sediment discharge of all rivers is reduced, as you see, for instance, in this example of the Yangtze River. Worldwide, in tropical areas, there, there is a huge loss of uh, mangrove belts. And here's an example from the Kamau Peninsula in the south of your country. Uh, tens of meters of, per year of erosion here. There. This scale runs from minus 25 to 25 meters per year. That is huge. And to illustrate this, you see uh, this uh, this mangrove area and, and the ships lying there and there, this whole, whole area used to be land in the, some decades ago. This is from the Futan uh, region. Um, other causes are that uh, if the sea level is rising or the, the, the bottom is subsiding then, then uh, that we creates an accommodation space with a difficult word. Uh, and that means that, that for instance, sed, uh, sand flats and mud flats uh, tend to follow the level of, the, of the, the sea. And if the sea level rises, then that creates an excess space that has to be filled up with sediment. And that usually comes from the coast. Uh, and degradation of mangrove and coral coals leads to sediment losses, especially the fine sediment that is captured by, by mangroves, um, is, is totally helpless if the, the protective uh, uh, systems are not there anymore. And then on top of that, we uh, concentrate the, the, the big rivers uh, in such a way that uh, they uh, don't disperse their sediment naturally anymore. Uh, but they, uh, they blow all the sand uh, or the, and the mud to, uh, to deeper water. Uh, so it is not uh, feeding the, the nearshore deltas anymore. 
And then finally what happens a lot around the world is that especially where ports are built, we block the longshore sediment transport. And then on one side you see that the, uh, you see there's an enormous uh, accumulation of sand and on the other side uh, there's an, a big erosion. This is uh, the area where I just uh, showed the, the swimming pool falling into the water. Then to make things worse, uh, a lot of uh, uh, delta areas uh, are uh, experiencing a huge subsidence. Uh, here's examples from Jakarta, uh, four meters uh, in, uh, in, in 30 years time. Um, uh, Louisiana, uh, also meters. Uh, the Mekong Delta, the scale is, is here in centimeters per year, and you see here around uh, Ho Chi Minh City, it's, it's, it's more than, than four centimeters per year. You have to realize that is four meters per century. Uh, so this trumps uh, uh, sea level rise. The main cause is groundwater extraction, uh, but... Uh, uh, this has a devastating effect on also on the shoreline erosion and especially on the frequency of flooding. Uh, it could be stopped if you stop the, the, the groundwater extraction. The example, the famous historical example is uh, Venice, which uh, uh, stopped uh, subsiding after the, the, the groundwater extraction was stopped. So the main lesson from this is that uh, we don't need climate change to mess up our coasts. Huh? But, uh, but it helps. It will be worse uh, if we don't do uh, many things. Because we have to deal with the scenarios of, uh, of climate change, which uh, uh, currently run, uh, yeah, let's say, somewhere between uh, 30 centimeters and a meter uh, by 2100 but uh, if the, the recent stories about like for instance uh, the uh, effect of antarctic ice uh, breaking or sliding into the sea uh, if, if those uh, become true then we have to maybe face two meters uh, of sea level rise by uh, 2100 and that uh, obviously for, for areas like the Mekong Delta or the Central Coast would be devastating. Just a few words on maintaining the coastline. Um, we have uh, experienced a lot uh, um, of, of, of good experiences with, with soft options, with nourishments, uh, both near shore and on the beach. And the, the good thing is that, that this directly addresses the, the sediment deficit. And after disturbance, uh, during the nourishment project, the beach is returned to a natural state. It needs to be repeated regularly. Uh, but the latest trend is mega nourishments. And uh, if you dump really big amounts of sediment in one go, then the price per cubic meter drops dramatically. Here are some examples. This is what the coast near The Hague looks like. It's extremely nice. Uh, you see this, this dune ridge here has actually grown naturally. Now compare this with the situation in Hoi An that I showed you in the beginning, where the coast is totally starved of sediment. And you can try to, to stop it with hard structures, but, but uh, it does not work. So adding a lot of sand to the system is quite possible nowadays and this is something we we promote and this is an example of this sand an in innovative mega nourishment the sand engine uh, that that was built in uh, 2011 and you see how this uh, has this very interesting shape that that deforms and this sand in the end is going to feed all of this uh, coast for the next uh, 20 years.